Alright everyone, ang pag-uusapan natin sa video na to ay isa sa mga katanungan na badalas kong naririnig from various traders, no? Anong time frame ba ang dapat kong ginagamit? Weekly? Daily? Hourly? Ano ba yung the best? ba? Diba? Madalas maikita natin sa social media na, oh si ganito nag-post siya, 30 minutes daw yung time frame na gamit niya, tinamo panalo. So iniisip natin kagad na, uy, maganda yung time frame na yun. Or may maririnig tayo from person X or person Y na, hindi, 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 hindi. dapat daily time frame yung gamit mo kasi ganito, kasi ganyan. ba? Diba? And then from there, it just becomes more confusing. Sasabihin ng ibang tao na, kasi dito ako tumingin pero nag-execute ako sa time frame na to. Ano ibig sabihin ng lahat na yun? So, the goal of this video is sasagutin ko, yung conundrum na yun, yung confusion na yun. And hopefully, by the end of this video, meron na kayong idea on what path you should take moving forward. Okay? Now, for me personally, gumagamit ako ng tatlong magkakaibang time frame. Don't worry, hindi sila lahat may equal significance or whatnot, no? Pero tatlong time frame ang ginagamit ko, lalo na when it comes to crypto or forex. Okay? Now, you may hear these terms used interchangeably by other traders. Okay, and that's fine, no? No one has ownership of terms naman. Pero ako, ito mismo, or personally, ang tawag ko sa kanila. Unang-una, meron akong direction time frame. Usually, ito yung pinakamataas na time frame na ginagamit ko. And the purpose if yung di- of nung direction na time frame is for me to identify a higher time frame bias para sa overall flow ng price. Okay? In Forex and in crypto, my quote-unquote direction time frame is the weekly chart. Okay? Bakit weekly chart? Ginagamit ko tong time frame na to to help me ascertain na okay, overall ba? Saan papunta yung price? Pababa ba tayo o pataas? Diba? Ano yung itsura ng structure? Kasi sa totoo lang, once you drill down, pababa kayo ng pababa ng time frame, paiba rin ng paiba yung itsura. Minsan, sa weekly time frame, it's gonna look bearish. Pero pagkapunta nyo sa kunyari, hourly time frame, mukha na siyang bullish. And then, nagkakaroon tayo ng confusion sa utak natin kung ano nga ba talaga yung dapat na natin gawin. Kasi, nagkakaroon tayo ng cross signals. Eh. Nagkakaroon tayo ng confusion nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, mixed signals di ba so the way i do it is pipili ako ng direction time frame and i use that as the standard of what i want to see as i move down so i identify using the weekly time frame ano ba talaga yung overall direction na pinupuntahan na to nasaan yung flow okay and that's important kasi it helps me establish a bias and as much as possible, I try to trade only in the direction of my bias. Kaya direction time frame yung tawag ko. Kung bearish tayo sa weekly, when I head down to lower time frames, then I'm going to look for potential bearish signals to trade off of. Hindi ko pinipilit as a general rule na mag-trade counter dun sa flow ko from the direction time frame. Now, some people will use the weekly time frame. Some people will use the daily. Some people will use the monthly. Okay? Wala pong mali. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin sa inyo na hindi, dapat ito lang. Kasi some people, yung mga nag scalp lang, they will use the hourly time frame as their direction time frame. Wala pong mali doon. Now, you're thinking, akala ko ba lilinawin mo to, lalo mo pinapagulo eh. Kaya lang nagmamatter yung direction time frame. Kasi you want a picture. You want a time frame na pwede mong sandalan. Kung nag i ka, what does it matter to you kung ano isura ng weekly time frame? Masyado na siyang malayo para sa'yo. Masyado na siyang broad. You want a more targeted approach. Kaya syempre, yung direction time frame mo, mas mababa. If you're swing trading, like me, then the weekly time frame, medyo malayo na nga eh. But it's just enough. Kasi ayaw ko naman mag, ano ba? 4-day time frame or 3-day time frame. Para sa akin, lalo lang gumugulo. I want to use a time frame na mas 
familiar sa mga tao. So the weekly time frame for me is just right. Pero let's say you're a trend follower. Let's say you're a position trader. Then you might want to consider na yung direction time frame na gamit nyo will be like say the monthly time frame. Diba? Or a fortnight time frame. Again, that depends completely on your niche, on your approach. Pero ang mahalaga, meron kayong sinasandalan, okay, as we move forward. Para hindi kayo laging nalilito, hindi kayo mabilis ma- mahatak ng barkado. The next time frame that I look at is the trigger time frame. Dito ako nagahanap ng signs, or ng mga signals na, uy, teka, parang may trade na na may nagsa-set up. Now, in the case of Forex and crypto, my trigger time frame is the daily time frame. Okay? So, weekly, direction. Daily, yung trigger. Pag may nakita akong signal sa daily na, uy, teka, mukhang eto na. Mukhang sumusurod na siya dun sa iniisip ko. Diba? Nag-pullback siya or nag breakout siya, whatever. Basta, meron nang sumusunod dun sa overall bias ko na galing dun sa direction time frame, then yun na yung trigger ko. Quote and quote, no? Yun na. Kailangan ko nang tumingin ng mas maayos. Kailangan ko na siyang aralin ng mas maigi. Kasi, this is showing me na balamang magkakaroon na ng some type of action that I need to take moving forward. Okay? Bakit important yung trigger time frame? Bakit hindi lang direction time frame tapos diretso na, execute na na tayo na execute? Kasi meron tayong directional bias na hinahanap, nahanap na natin, pero syempre gusto natin na timingan din natin ng maayos yung markado. The trigger time frame helps with that. Parang isipin nyo, alarm clock yan. Diba? Uy, alas is na, kailangan ko nang gumising. In the same way, uy, May nangyayari na, kailangan mo nang maging listo. Kailangan mo nang tignan. So yun yung significance ng trigger time frame sa akin. So during the course of the week, when it comes to Forex, when it comes to crypto, hindi ko na tinitignan ulit yung weekly chart. Or at the very least, sinisilip ko lang. Parang mabilis lang, 10 seconds lang, ganon. Kasi meron na akong bias for the week eh. Hindi naman magkaklose yung candle ng weekly chart midweek. At least it shouldn't. Diba? Therefore, once I have established that, ang tinitignan ko, isa doon lang sa trigger time frame. Now, paano ko may nakita akong trigger? Paano ko may nakita akong senyales? Ano ang gagawin ko next? Then I go down to the execution time frame. Dito sa time frame na to, refine ko yung trade idea ko, hinahanapan ko ng stop, hinahanapan ko ng target, and so on. Dito siya lahat nangyayari. Dito na pumapasok yung trade plan. Kung baga. Diba? Tapos kapag nangyari, sumunod sa plano ko yung galaw ng merkado, then I execute. So for example, let's say sa weekly time frame ng Ethereum or ng Bitcoin, you know from watching my videos that I've been bearish. Pero hindi ko siya trade in accordance lang sa weekly time frame. Now, I go down to the daily time frame and I wait for some type of sign. Diba? Meron na bang pinapakita na eto na, we're gonna move soon. Diba? Anong mga levels yung dapat tinitignan ko sa trigger time frame ko na kailangan ma-violate or ma-invalidate or mapuntahan para mapaisip ako na eto na, kailangan ko ng umaksyon. Okay, napunta na tayo sa level na yun. Nangyari na yung iniisip ko. Now I go down to the execution time frame. Now I go there and then I identify, okay, this level has broken. Diba? Where would I want the pullback to go based on this time frame? Okay? Para pumasok ako doon sa trade and then saan ko ilalagay yung stop ko? ba? Where do I put my target? Yes, my target is identified using higher time frames. Pero sa execution time frame, pwede kong i-refine yun. Kasi mas marami na akong nakikitang levels that might be more significant once I go down to these lower time frames. Minsan kasi sa higher time frames, a level might seem insignificant. Pero once you go down sa execution time frame, mas nagmumukha silang importante. So, I will refine my target slightly or I will refine my stop slightly based on these levels. Siyempre, mas nagtitake pa rin ng greater weight yung mga naikita ko sa higher time frame, but these refinements allow me to squeeze out a bit more from my trades if necessary. Now, 
yung execution time frame ko sa crypto is either H4 or H1. Okay? Bakit H4 or H1? Kasi depende yan sa kung ano yung basa ko sa general movement ng market for the week. If I don't feel like anything is imminent, okay, meaning hindi ko naman naramdaman na may mangyayari agad, okay na sa H4. Para every 4 hours ko na lang siya babantayan. Pero kapag ka-feeling ko na, uy, teka, mukhang may mangyayari ah, then I would go down to H1. Tapos every hour ko siyang titignan. At least every hour nagising ako, syempre 24 hours yun na, di ba? So, every hour ko lang siya sisilipin. Kung meron ako naikita na, nagsiset up doon sa execution time frame ko, then I take it. If wala, edi eh wala. Okay? Sa Forex naman, my execution time frame, most of the time, is the hourly time frame. There will be rare instances where I move down to the 30-minute time frame, but this is only because kapag ka meron na ako naikita, clear na siya sa utak ko, it's just that medyo magulo ng konte yung hourly chart. So I will move down one step to the 30-minute chart and then assess from there para lang mabigyan ako ng further clarity. But most of the time, it's gonna be the hourly chart. Okay? Now, let me give you an idea sa mga triple time frames na ginagamit ng mga tao. Madalas, parang yung sa akin, it's gonna be weekly, daily, and then an hourly, whether it's H1 or H4. I see that very, very often in a lot of traders. Yun yung ginagamit nila and they use it well. Diba? Doon ko rin pinattern yung sarili kong gamit na uh, multi-time frames, no? Meron din naman ibang traders na ginagamit nila monthly, weekly, and daily. In fact, yun yung gamit ko personally sa PSE. Diba? Kasi we look at it from a longer time frame perspective. Sometimes, you would still drill down a bit if you want to refine your execution, but by and large, okay na yun. Mga scalpers, madalas na ikita ko, H1, 15 minutes, and then 1 minute. Or, H1, 15 minutes, then 5 minutes. Parang ganon yung pag-breakdown nila. Meron pa rin silang directional time frame or direction time frame. In this case, hourly lang. Tapos, i-refine nila sa maliliit na time frame to look for where to enter their trades, when to enter their trades, and so on. Meron din na umaakilala na ginagawa nila H4, H1, and then 15 minutes. They're not exactly scalpers. Parang gitna sila between scalpers and swing traders, no? So, ganun yung ginagamit nilang time frame. Now, as a general rule of thumb, okay, I don't see a lot of people going through each and every single possible na time frame. Kasi minsan may makikita kayo sa mga Twitter, sa Facebook, sabi nila, oh, nahanap ko tong trade na to sa 17-minute time frame. Diyos ko naman. Kung each and every single time frame, kailangan nyo pang tingnan para lang makahanap kayo ng trade, odds are, there's not gonna be a clear-cut trade there. So as a general rule of thumb, gusto nyo gamitin is yung mga time frames na quote-unquote default. Tapos, gusto nyo, yung hinahanap nyo, divisible by mga 4 or 5 yung intervals. Meaning, for example, monthly, weekly, daily. In a month, there are 4 weeks and in a week, there are 5 days. So, divisible by 4 or 5. The same way sa ginagawa ko. Ang weekly, papuntang daily, okay, is for, uh, 5 days. ba? Now, yung uh, daily, papuntang H4, is 6 Pero, ayaw kong gumamit ng alanganin. Ayaw kong gumamit ng 6-hour time frame. So, the next step down is H4. Yun yung default. Pero, sinundan pa rin natin yung rule na roughly divided by 4 or divided by 5 yung pababa natin. That's from H4 to H1, obviously, divided by 4. From H1 to M15, again, divided by 4. ba? From M15... Papuntang M5. Bakit hindi M3? Pwede naman. Meron din ako alam na gumagamit nun. But again, kaya M15 kasi siya yung quote ko default na next step down. So kahit na hindi siya exactly 4 or 5, people make do. Kasi siya yung next step down. Hindi nila ipipilit na hindi. Kailangan M4.5 yan para lang sakto. do sa divisible by 4 or 5. Okay? But, at the end of lahat ng sinabi ko, di ba? 
you need to find yung time frames na hiyang sa'yo. Kung kunwari, you have a full-time job, then I sincerely doubt na tama yung tinitignan mong time frame will be H1, M5, and M1. Napaka-impractical. Hindi mo mababantayan yan eh. Diba? You need to adjust. Kung kunwari naman, sabi natin, scalper ka. Gusto mo nakatingin ka pa sa monthly time frame? Diyos ko naman. Parang medyo naman masyado mo nang pinapahirapan yung sarili mo. Diba? So guys, dito po nagtatapos yung video na to. But before I go, okay, one last tip. Important yung tumitingin kayo ng multiple time frames regardless of the way that you trade. Kung ayaw nyo ng tatlo, pwede nyong kontean. Tanggalin nyo yung directional time frame or yung ti- direction time frame. Gawin nyo lang trigger and execution. Okay pa rin yun. But looking at multi-time frames or multiple time frames can only help you become a better trader moving forward. Diba? You do need to be able to identify yung general direction or general flow ng movement ng market in higher time frames. You do. You just simply do. There's no ifs or buts about it. You do. And it will only help you if you can refine your trade idea by moving down time frames. Diba? Siyempre, sino ba naman ang ayaw ng mas magandang risk-reward na trade? Sino ba naman ang ayaw na mas malaki yung potential na kitain sa isang trade simply because you were able to refine your trade idea further by moving one step down sa time frames? Diba? So, this can only help you moving forward. Plus, you will realize na kapag ginagawa nyo na yon, how fractal the nature of charts can be. Na ang nangyayari sa weekly time frame, maikita nyo rin sa daily time frame, maikita nyo rin sa hourly. And from there, it will help you better understand context. It will help you better understand market structure as you move forward and grow as a trader. Okay? So guys, hopefully makatulong sa inyo tong video na to. And if so, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a like share it with your friends, and consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, guys, maraming maraming salamat po sa panonood. I really, really appreciate it. Good luck and happy trading!